Okay, so the purpose of this video is to pick up from where we left off, from the isocost and isoquant, and we'll be talking about the long run and short run total cost curves. Now, this video is going to be very important because this is going to determine how well you understand um, things like the marginal, uh, marginal cost curves as well as the average cost curves for the long run and the short run. So, pay attention, okay? So, what the f are total cost curves? They're simply curves that display all the total costs that a firm or business can incur when they produce various quantities of X in the long run as well as in the short run. Now, there will be bound to be some confusion between what it means by the long run as well as the short run. So we're going to go through this in a little bit. Alright, we're going to start with what the curves look like first. So just let me show you what the total cost curves are. So you have a graph with the total cost on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis. So that's your long run total cost and that is your short run total cost. So one of the things you should be asking is why do they meet here? Right? Why do they intersect at this point? So we're going to find out how we're going to be deriving these total cost curves. So using some rational deductive logic, you should be wondering what can give me the total amount of cost for this amount of quantity produced. Well, if you've guessed the isocost, then you're right. And you're also going to need the isoquant because the isoquant tell you, tells you exactly how much quantity of X is being produced, right? So this is where we're going to pick up from the last video. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of recap on what is the isocost and the isoquant and how they work out uh, between each other. Okay, just let me quickly draw a graph with capital versus labor. And just right below of it, I'm going to draw another graph with the total cost versus the total quantity of X produced. So let's say I'm interested in producing three quantities of X. I have X0, X1, and X2. Obviously, as I move towards the right side of the uh, horizontal axis, I'm increasing the production of X. So now I want to find out what would be the total cost for producing each quantity of X. Okay, so to, to show my quantity, I'm going to have to use isoquants, right? You've got isoquants X0, X1, as well as X2. Okay, you should really understand how isoquants work. So, how do we find the total cost using the ISO cost? Well, I hope you recall the concept of the long run expansion path because this expansion path is, contains all the points where the ISO cost is tangent with the ISO quant, just like what you see over here. Okay, so these are the three points that the firm will be producing at. I mean, uh, this is going to show the amount of labor and capital they're going to need to be producing these quantities of X0, X1, and X2. So just to be a little bit meticulous, to produce X0, the firm is going to need L0 amount of labor and K0 amount of labor. To produce X1, it's going to need L1 amount of labor, K1 amount of capital. To produce X2, it needs L2 amount of labor and K2 amount of capital. So, here's how I'm going to find out what is the total cost to produce certain quantities, right? So, to produce X0, I know that the total cost is going to be the amount of labor multiplied by the wage rate plus the amount of capital multiplied by the interest rates. I hope that's familiar to you. So, let's imagine that there are real numbers there so we can find out what C0 is. So, we're going to mark out C0 over here for X0 quantities of X produced. Okay, so that's how we find the total cost. So, how about the total cost to produce X1? Well, it will be C1 uh, equals to the amount of labor, which is L1, multiplied by the wage rate plus K1 multiplied by the interest rates. Now, it should be obvious to you that C1 is more than C0 because the ISO cost from which X0 is produced is lower than the ISO cost from which X1 is produced. Notice this ISO cost and that ISO cost. So, going back to the graph below, I know that C1 is going to be somewhere there for the quantity of X1 being produced. So, I'm just going to do the same thing up to C2. Which is, the, which is the total cost for X2 being produced and there I have the total cost. Obviously, the total cost has to be increasing when you're producing more of it, right? So what you're going to do is to connect the dots to get the long run total cost. See, is that easy, right? So now that we've bitten the sh** of the long run total cost, let's talk about the short run. Thanks for watching a sample of the Quickonomics online learning experience. We hope you've enjoyed it. We believe that true happiness lies in realizing ambitions and dreams. That's why we make our products specific to your needs. 
simple to understand and captivating so that you can learn effectively while saving time, realizing those ambitions and dreams. The Quickonomics online learning experience is a range of supplementary lectures, tutorials and exam solutions in the form of videos which you can conveniently view anytime, anywhere. Watching our videos before and after your regular lessons at school, we aim to give you joy in learning and build academic confidence at the comfort of your own relaxed learning environment. So how can you begin? We welcome you to purchase Quickie Dollars to redeem the videos for full access to the Quickonomics online learning experience. Thank you for starting with Quickonomics.